I mean, are they good enough to be considered starters? Um, yeah, Evan Ferguson is fit enough to play. He's fine. Jamie McGrath's fine. Unfortunately, Chidozio Benya is out. Can you tell us what's wrong about his injury? Yeah, he, <clears throat> two injuries, but he, uh, it's an ankle injury really has uh, ruled him out from... Um, he hasn't been able to train this week. He hasn't trained at all, so he hasn't been able to put his foot in a boot properly. And also, <clears throat> he had a toy hamstring which forced him to come off late against Liverpool. He played against Manchester United last week, but he didn't feel he could sprint fully and has been... Anxious about that as well. And how will that change your game plan? Because he's been such an important player for you. Yeah, Joe has been terrific. He has been excellent. He must say he's been a shining light for us. Um, so, but regardless, it's an it's an opportunity for other players. And that's the way. That's the way. Certainly, we have to view it. Thank you. Steve Dole. Justin. And um, please, uh, regards to the start for tomorrow night's game, you went out against the Dutch, pressed them really high in the first half in Dublin. Mm. Um, Ronald Koeman admitted today he wasn't expecting that kind of approach. Is that something you'll be looking at to do tomorrow? <coughs> well, it's, it's certainly an option. Um, you know, I think, uh, listen, it's a great game coming to Amsterdam to play Holland. You know, we should really look forward to it. You know, it's been a long time since Ireland have been here. You know, it's over 20 years since Ireland have been here playing, playing against Holland in a competitive fixture. And... Uh, so it's one the players should really relish. Great opportunity to play one of the best teams in Europe. Okay, they're they're playing to win to be to go to the the Euro. So the big motivation for the Dutch players to do it in their own city in front of their own fans. Alternatively, we have uh, fantastic travelling support. We have great support against Gibraltar travelling in Portugal, and then again, terrific uh, away support tomorrow tomorrow night. So. Um, now it'll be a brilliant atmosphere and a game that we can we can you know we can uh, look forward to. Just there, can we get the action as well from you, Stephen, on, on the apology letter today from the CEO Jonathan Hill? Um, obviously, it's a story that's rumbled on for the whole week. It's perceived from outside of football as being very damaging to, to the association, especially when they're looking for money to invest in football, a half a billion of taxpayers' money. What's your own reaction to what's gone on the last week and the apology itself? Do you think that will be good enough? to move the story on. <clears throat> okay, uh, first of all, um, I'm not sure of the exact details of of the situation, but as Jonathan has said, uh, all money has been paid back in relation to whatever uh, whatever tax issue it was. You know, um, it's now we're all a feel. Um, Jonathan is someone who looks like he's a very, very capable CEO, and obviously he's had to had to take him out, come in 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 difficult times, and manage the organisation, and uh, he's assembled a whole new senior leadership team, and that's we you know it's, all, it's obviously very professional and very driven. So I don't know. I don't know every detail because I'm not party to the discussions. I'm not involved in those discussions. But um, that's all I can say is that he's been quite professional overall, and I think a lot of people in are very, are very clear in their roles. Obviously, they changed a lot of the departments and it's clear, clear demarcation. You know, in in I, I can see in the you know clearly defined roles. For, for the various departments, but um, he's been very supportive of the football side of it at all levels. So um, I don't know. I don't. I'm not. I'm not sure of all the details, but so I can't. I can't. I can't comment on everything. But that's that's uh, how I'd view it. Do you think you should say? Yeah, Damien Scott, please. Stephen, as, as a group, what have you learned from this campaign? As a group. Um, well, I think I think we've learned a lot for sure, um, and this to, it's, for us now it's about these two games, Holland tomorrow night and New Zealand on Tuesday. We want to finish strongly, finish the year strongly. I think it's a 
it's a fantastic game against Holland. The history of Irish football, all the great Irish teams in the past, uh, some you know legendary players in the past. But as we spoke earlier in the week, there has there's been elusive the number of big away victories in that period. Um, obviously, there has been victories in tournaments and World Cups and European Championships, but in terms of qualifiers, um, the, those big beating the major countries has proved elusive for even the best teams. So for us, it's a massive, massive challenge to play Holland on the night that they can qualify in Amsterdam. Um, it's a huge, huge challenge and one that we must bra- embrace and look forward to and be positive about. And um, so we're, the players are, 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 are well prepared for the, for the task ahead. The result of that tackle gun has, how, as you would have wanted in the campaign, but do you as players feel the progress has been made? Yeah, definitely. Um, it, I know I've seen a lot of stuff in the media and that, um, you know, we've come under a lot of criticism and, and rightly so in terms of results. Um, you know, it, it's been a tough one because the, the group we got, we knew it was, um, it, it was an uphill battle right from the start. Uh, you know, the teams that we got, uh, I, I think we were really unfortunate and I think any other team would find themselves really unfortunate with it as well. Um, but you know that that's what you're up against um, the best teams in the world and uh, if you want to progress and succeed you've got to beat them but in terms of actual performances um, I, I think we've come a long way whether people see that or not we believe that within the group we can see that within the group and hopefully it, it continues for a long time um, certainly from when I first came in um, on my debut I think in terms of uh, team performances, we, we've definitely come a long way, um, and, and we know that as players and as staff as well. And we, we've all been in it together and given our all, um, but just come up short in terms of results. Gavin Keane, please. Uh, Ariel, uh, just yeah. as a group, what have you talked about in terms of what you need to do to turn those slender defeats into victories? It's it's small margins within games. I think there hasn't been any game really. I think apart from France away, uh, which is you know a difficult place for anyone to go, um, even at the best of times. I think th- there's just little moments within games that have cost us that haven't gone away. Um, you know we've had chances, haven't took them, and you know teams at this level they're going to punish you if you don't take your chances when they come along because you don't get many um, at this level and we've obviously found that out the hard way. Um, I, I, you know, we, we don't want to keep harping on about how far we've come, how you know, well we think we've been playing because at the end of the day it is down to results and that's ultimately what we'll be judged on. Um, so we're obviously really disappointed with results, um, certainly this campaign, but yeah, I, I think it's it's just moments win games um, and you know certainly with the teams that we faced uh, the quality within those teams are going to take advantage of those moments and just Stephen on the, um, as Alan talks about small margins and those moments going against you when you look back at them the one, those moments that have gone against you are there consistent trends there that's letting you down or are they just all kind of individual moments of their own that you can have really well, I think that's a, it's, you know it's it's a big question that encompasses a lot of games. So I think um, it's been well documented. People are saying we conceded a higher percentage of goals now, so the box, um, and that was that 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 was an issue. But I I think. Um, Probably in the in the games against Greece and Holland, um, in the two home games, the disappointing part from our point of view is that we conceded on the counter attack. I think the first game against Holland, we were one 0 up and had a chance to go two 0 up, and then we we committed to a game plan. To be fair, we didn't drop off once we scored, but we got caught on the counter attack for their penalty. Um, so that was something we could have avoided. I feel. And uh, 
we got punished and they will punish you Holland and the top teams they do punish you that's everything every every space that you leave at that critical time against the top teams is exploited and punished um, so it's a harsh harsh lesson and um, so again you know we, we found that against Greece when we in the ascendancy for for that long period before half time a lot of play and um, you know a lot of territorial corners throw ins in the 45th 47 48 and concede counter attacking the 48 minutes so it, we we can't blame anyone else on yourselves on that you know um, so that was that was uh, that was some, a goal goals, probably a couple of goals that we shouldn't have conceded Final questions in the live from Ed and then Mithar. Stephen, um, I suppose the, the pressure's off to turn extent tomorrow night. Um, are you hopeful that we can get to see the very best of what the squad can offer? And should the team come away with a result? Um, how much would that mean to you, both personally and professionally, at this stage? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's a big challenge. Holland uh, showed their quality when they beat Greece 3 0 here. They're 3 0 up at half time against Greece. And uh, you know, they beat them very convincingly. So that's what they're capable of. Uh, and we're well aware of that. Um, but at the same time, it's a very narrow game in Dublin. Um, very, very tight game overall. Um, and in that, we didn't concede many chances in the game, believe it or not. Not too many, and I think uh, for a large period of the game, in possession, we were absolutely excellent as well. Um, for a large period of the game, so we've got to uh, we've got to play really well, we play exceptionally well tomorrow night to get a result. But we're happy with the team that we have, and um, okay, Chidozi's missing, um, who gives you a cutting edge, but. Regardless, I'm, very, I'm pleased with the team that we have tomorrow, very pleased. And uh, we're looking to put in a very, very strong performance and that's what we must, must strive to do. McDonough? Um, um, the Dutch know they win tomorrow, they qualify. Does spoiling a party maybe come into motivation in front of what to be a, a big home support but also a big travelling support for, for your team? Yeah, it's, it's not so much about spoiling our party, but we want to come here and win. Um, <laughs> They'll obviously be right up for it, but I think they'll also be aware that we can play with a bit of freedom. It's a bit of a free hit for us, um, which is obviously disappointing to say as a as a player. But um, that's the way it is, and yeah, we, we want to win the game. Um, spoiled our party to an extent, but it's not you know a, a vendetta against them. It's just um, you know as a professional, you want to win every game that you're playing, um, and especially at the highest level against one of the best teams in the world. You want to go and beat them. Um, and it, it'd mean an awful lot for us to get that result. Um, but we know it's going to be difficult and, and really tough. So um, we'll see what happens on the night. We'll move into the embargo.